a pretty face, funny hat. That's what my blondie is. Lovable feet, both flat. That's what my Dagwood is. Blondie's not always right. I let her think she is. All of my thoughts are bright, long as he thinks they're his. Life with us is fun and crazy. Baby Duffling, us and Daisy, what a family. Incredible, bumsteadable. <laughs> Hurry, you'll miss your bus. Watch out, you'll burn your stew. Nothing's too much for us. As long as with me there's you. Dagwood and Blondie. Blondie and Dagwood. Always with me there's you. There you are, Daisy. Thank you, Daisy. I'll take the paper this morning. Bobby! Oh, dear, what now? What's the matter, dear? Yesterday there wasn't any shaving cream, and this morning there isn't any toothpaste. I had to turn in the empty toothpaste tube at the drugstore before I could get you a new tube of shaving cream. But how am I going to brush my teeth? Dagwood, we're right in the middle of an emergency, and you can't have everything. Brush your teeth with a little soap. Oh, oh hello, Alvin. Hello. Good morning, Miss Bumstead. Good morning, Alvin. I've got to ask Mr. Bumstead to do a favor for my mother. Oh, you better wait till after he's had his breakfast. He's not in a very good humor right now. Oh, well, I don't mind. I'm used to that. Mm. Hey, Mr. Bumstead! What do you want? Just skip it. Oh, no. I told you he was cross, Alvin. That was a gross understatement, Mrs. Bumstead. He's so mad he's frothing at the mouth. What was the favor your mother wanted of Mr. Bumstead, Alvin? Mother wanted him to take this clock to be repaired. Oh, well, just leave it on the table there. I'll attend to it later. Thanks. We're having applesauce for breakfast. My mother opened a can of peaches this morning. Mmm, wish we could afford some. Good morning, everybody. What do you wish we could afford? Good morning, Dagwood. Hmm? Peaches. <laughs> peaches? Gee, Bonnie, you haven't called me that for... Oh, peaches. Oh, they don't cost much. Oh, don't they? They're 21 points, mm -hmm. and out of 192 points, I've already spent 168. Mm -hmm. I need 16 more for the stew tonight, which means I'll have eight. And if you can show me how I can get a can of peaches, I'll appreciate it. Oh, well. Mrs. Bumstead was caught with her points down, so to speak. Uh, oh, I, I'll, I'll do that. Honey. Oh, thank you. Come on, Alexander. Have your breakfast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mr. Bumstead, if I may make a suggestion... Look, Alvin, I don't need your help. Just keep your suggestions to yourself. Okay, but it seems like an awful waste of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 what happened? Uh, oh! Uh, uh, Oh, Dagwood, that was Mrs. Fuddle's clock. You were to take it downtown to have it fixed. What was wrong with it? What does it matter now what was wrong with it? Well, we could give it to the scrap drive anyway. And it'll cost you five dollars or a new clock. And I don't think you can get a new clock. Yeah. Let me tell Never you... Never mind, dear. Go back and eat your breakfast. Oh, oh. So I cut the middle of it out. Yeah, huh? yeah, but I gotta have it this morning. I'm in it. Dagwood, you didn't do anything, did you? I most certainly did. I wrote an ad for the classified section. Oh, oh, here, read it, dear. Huh? Oh. Oh yeah. How would you like to own a three-room palace in the Bellevue suburbs? The J.C. Dithers Construction Company has erected 50 modern dwellings with streamlined plumbing, 
real fireplaces, and an extra pair of pants answering to the name of shortening bread. And well, they've got this, this all scrambled up here. What will Mr. Dithers say? You won't be able to quote him. Yeah. Well, it isn't your fault, dear, so don't you care. Just eat a good breakfast, and whatever he says won't matter so much. Uh, let the children have the eggs, though. Yeah, well. and, and don't use the butter, dear. I yeah. need it for a cake. Oh, and there isn't any sugar for your cereal. The milk's for the children. I had to give yours to the puppy. Mm -hmm. Well, like I always say, there's nothing like a good hearty breakfast to start the day right. Well, anyway, I'll have a cup of coffee. No, you won't, dear. That's tea. But it'll taste nice with a piece of dry toast. Well, goodbye, everybody. We're having bacon for breakfast. Bacon. Takes me back to when I was young. I am, but I don't get bacon. Oh. Oh, if I only had one more ration book. I know how to get one, Mommy. How? Get one more person. Why, well, that's a wonderful idea. Five books will provide a lot more variety for five people than four will for four. Why don't we take a boarder? Oh, no, Blondie. I'd rather do without things than have somebody else around. All right, dear. Then you be the one to do without. Now hurry up or you'll miss your bus. Mm -mm. I don't have to worry about the bus anymore. From now on, I'm riding to work with Mr. Jackson in the carpool. Bumstead hasn't left yet, has he? Oh, he must have. I never deliver the mail till after his bus time. Here, I'll get Daddy's hat. Oh, dear. Get him, Mommy. Alexander, I want to speak to your father. Can't stop him now, Mr. Dithers. He's just leaving. But if you'll listen, you can hear him. Yes, we do. <laughs> well, come on, children. <laughs> Tinkers, the boss. Mary, as soon as Mr. Buck... Where is Mary? She went to work in a defense plant this morning and sent me to take her place. Who are you, her mother? Oh, oh flatterer. I'm her grandmother. I suppose her mother's a welder. Oh, no, sir. A riveter. Dagwood. Huh? Dagwood, that isn't funny. I know it isn't, Mr. Dithers. It hurts. Oh, well. What happened? I was in a carpool. The only man I have left with teeth, and you have to go swimming. Huh? Carpool? Mm. Oh, for heaven's sake. Huh? Now get into my office. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Dithers, will you try that on me? What do you mean, putting that silly ad in the paper? Did you ever do anything right? Well, it wasn't my fault, Mr. Dithers. A newspaper mixed it up. Now, now, please don't get mad. I am mad. Huh? Oh, not at you. You can't help what you do. Oh. I'm an intelligent man. Now, why did I ever put up those 50 houses? Because they were going to build that defense plant at Bellevue. Well, why didn't I wait till they did? Now they've changed their minds, and I'm stuck with those houses. Maybe we could move them over to where the defense plant is being built, huh? Dagwood, are you crazy? Oh, don't answer that. Look, I'm going to Bellevue in half an hour. Now, you take charge of the office till I get back. Uh, when will that be, Mr. Dithers? Well, the way I feel now, never. If I can't get rid of those houses, I... Yes, Mary? Or whatever your name is. It's Francis, Mr. Dithers. Uh, but you may call me Fanny. <laughs> uh, there's a Mr. Randolph Wheeler to see you, sir. 
Randolph Wheeler. Ooh, tell him I'll be right out. Is that the man that built the tool plants all over the country? That's the one. Well, gee whiz, Mr. Dithers, if you could get him to build a tool plant in Bellevue, then maybe you can get rid of the houses. Oh, I think you've got something there, Dagwood. Wheeler may be the answer to our whole problem. Yeah. <laughs> Randy Wheeler. J.C., you old goat. <laughs> How have you been, Randy? Oh, great, J.C., you oh, great. Yeah, fine. Remember the night you got drunk at the reunion? Yeah, I sure do. <laughs> Remember the night you brought the fan dance at the stag oh. party? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Randy, I want you to meet Dagwood Bumstead, uh, one of my oldest employees. And he certainly looks young in that bunch out there. Huh? <laughs> Glad to meet you, Bumstead. Glad to know you, Mr. Wheeler. Here, here, have a chair. Yeah, uh, thank you. Let me take your hat. Oh, thank you. Uh, have a cigar, Randy. Uh, thank you. Oh, excuse me. Here, pardon me. Yes. Oh, Say, that smells like a good cigar. Oh, they are, Mr. Wheeler. They're the only kind I ever smoke. But it's getting harder and harder for me to get them anymore. No, well, it's going to be practically impossible. Oh, yeah. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, Randy, tell me what you're doing here. You going to build another tool plant? No, J.C., I'm not interested in business right now. Mm -hmm. I'm back here on account of Vicky. Mm -hmm. Vicky? Yes, you remember Vicky, don't you? Oh, sure, sure. Mm, uh -huh. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me. Here's the image of you, Randy. Uh, hey, she's a cute little girl, Mr. Wheeler. You know, I have a little boy just about her age, and I have a little two-year-old girl. That, Dagwood, uh, I think you better she, go and tend to that she, Geary contract. Uh, oh, oh, yes. Well, uh, so long, Mr. Wheeler. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you again, I hope. Of course, Vicky's changed since that picture was taken. Uh, that's how she looks now. Oh, I'll take back what I said, Randy. She doesn't look like you. <laughs> now, what do you mean, though, you're back here on account of Vicky? Well, she's a problem, J.C. Stage struck. Got herself mixed up in some little theater movement. Well, so what? Everybody gets the acting bug sometime during their life. Let her work it out of her system. Not at these prices. Some ham director is encouraging her so he can marry her and get some of my money. But I have hopes that a few months away from him will make her forget him and all the rest of this silly theater nonsense. A few months, huh? Well, what about you, Randy? Uh, you're a pretty active man to sit around that long doing nothing. Well, it's worth it. Why, that's ridiculous. You stagnate. Besides, it's unpatriotic. A man of your ability should be directing his energies towards the war effort. I've got it. Why not build one of your tool plants here? Property's too high. Besides... Oh, I don't mean right here in town. In fact, I know the ideal site for it, about 100 miles north. Some talk of building a defense plant there, but... Uh... Randy, let's you and I go up there and mosey around for a couple of weeks, huh? <laughs> I'd like to, but... Oh, uh, no buts uh, about it. Come on, we can just make the 1120. Well, uh, what about uh, Vicky? I know she wouldn't go. It's hard enough to get her to come here. I couldn't very well leave her alone, a stranger in a strange town. Oh, she doesn't have to stay alone. She can stay with the Bumsters. They're young, have a charming home, kids, dogs. Why, Vicky, you love it there. Well, it sounds like the right atmosphere for her. Look, you call her at the hotel and tell her to be ready, and I'll make arrangements with Dagwood. Okay. Dagwood, it's all set. He's going to buy the houses. He will, provided you take his daughter home with you for a couple of weeks. Oh, sure. We'd be very happy. His daughter? What about Blondie? Is she'd object. Blondie won't object when you get a bonus, will she? Oh, no. A bonus does make a difference. <laughs> Wheeler's calling his daughter now to be ready, so you get over to the Hampton Hotel. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Dithers. I've got to call Blondie. Oh, all right. Call her, and then rush right over and pick up Vicky. Yeah. Pick up Vicky. Dear, you're bringing home a guest. Dad, 
would, Bumstead. How can you when you know how scarce food is? Oh, she won't eat much. She's just a little girl, and it'll only be for a few weeks. A few weeks? Dagwood! Oh, one of Mr. Dither's deals. I might have known. You're getting a bonus. Dear, why didn't you say so in the first place? Of course I'll have lunch and ready. We'll have a party for the little girl and the children. Yes. See you later, dear. Goodbye, dear. A bonus. Well. <laughs> Too made up for a minstrel show? Work mandos, Mommy. What's that goo on your face? That isn't goo, it's camouflage. Goo or camouflage? Alexander, you better take it right off. Your father's bringing home a young lady to lunch. Oh, gee, do I have to get dressed up? Of course, darling. Can Alvin stay? Yes, if he gets cleaned up, too. How old is this young lady? I guess about your age. Well, so long, Alexander. There's a pal for you. You could have stuck by me for just one lunch. Oh, there'll be more than one, Alexander. The little girl is staying here for a few weeks. A few weeks? Daisy, you'll have to stick by me. I'd like to see little Miss Wheeler. Right over there, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Not at all. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You're all set to leave, aren't you? Yes. Here. See what I got for you? Yeah. You take Dolly and I'll take the suitcase. I don't want to go with you. But your daddy told you to. No, he didn't. Huh? He said to wait for him. Oh, you must have misunderstood him. You come along now and we'll call him up later. No, leave me alone. Now, wait. Go away. Wait, wait, leave me alone. We'll get some ice cream. Daddy. Daddy. What did this man say to you? He said that you wanted me to go with him. Oh, he did, huh? Anything well, wrong, Mr. Phillips? Phillips? Plenty. This man's a kidnapper. Me? The beast. Call the police. Why don't we take care of it? Oh, no! What happened? No, no, I, 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 I'm not a kidnapper, honest. I, well, I, I, I thought that she, well, the clerk said that, well, we, we I'll see you later. Wait a minute. Well, uh, my boss told me to come here for a little girl. I was supposed to pick up for uh, Mr. Wheeler. What makes you think we'll believe that story? Now, just a minute. I think that Are I Are you could... Dagwood Bumstead? Yes, I think I I'm could... Vicki Wheeler. Well, that's... Uh, is Vicki Wheeler? Oh, you can't be. You're a big girl. Well, what did you expect, a midget? Oh. There's evidently been a mistake. This uh, gentleman came for me. Yeah. You see, it's just a pure case of mistaken indemnity. Well, in that case... I certainly owe you an apology. Uh, we... we uh, and so do I, Miss Wheeler. Come along, dear. Oh, I... I sure want to thank you, Miss Wheeler. You certainly got me out of a spot. I got us both out of a spot. Uh -huh. And, uh, after giving the matter careful consideration, I've decided to decline your invitation. Oh, you have? Well, I think it's a good thing, because I don't think Blondie... Oh, hello there, Dagwood. Uh, oh, hello, Mr. Clark. How's the theater coming? Oh, fine. That's good. I... Oh, excuse me, Miss Wheeler. Mr. Clark, uh, I meant to tell you the boss is out of town, so we'll be held up for a while. That's okay. You made the projection booth larger, didn't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> Give me a ring when you're finished. Sure. Oh, well, I was very happy Are to... you interested in the theater, Mr. Bumstead? Oh, yes. I, I was just... Well, my bags are over there. Uh -huh. Well, huh? I've changed my mind. I'm coming with you after all. You are? Well, you, you just said... I, I mean, I, I don't think my wife would... Oh, she's expecting me, isn't she? Oh, yes, but... Oh, then what would you tell your wife if you showed up without me? I, I was wondering what I would tell her when I show up with you. <laughs> huh? Why are you eating in the dining room? Because we're having a little girl for lunch. Are you going to eat the little girl? Of course not, darling. The little girl is going to eat with you and Alexander. We're having a party. I like parties. Uh, now, Cookie, no cookie. I mean, no cookie now, Cookie. Now, remember your manners, darling. Don't grab things. And when you're given anything, or if anybody says anything nice to you, say thank you, politely. Yes, Mommy. And if you act like a little angel, do you know what Mommy's going to give you? A bonus. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
For the 50th time, Alexander, I won't have lunch with you. Doesn't our friendship mean anything? When women are involved, no. But she's staying for weeks. What am I going to do? That I don't know, but I'm making myself scarce around here. No skinny, freckle-faced, silly, giggling girl is going to... Warm, Mr. Bumstead. No, but it's going to be. Uh oh, is it? Hey, Mister. Uh huh. Dollar eighty-five, please. Oh yeah. Hello. 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 I'm Vicky Wheeler. Which one of you is Alexander? He is. And for the first time in my life, I wish I was. Well, so long, Alvin. See you after lunch. Come right in, Miss Wheeler. Thank you. Mommy, this is Miss Wheeler. Isn't this a surprise? Yes, it is. Uh, you were expecting me, weren't you? Oh, yes, of course. But not quite so much of you. Oh, that is, my husband said you were younger. I mean, I'll see to your bags. Uh, Alexander, please take Miss Wheeler into the living room. <laughs> Mommy, is that Daddy's bonus? So, you were bringing home a little girl. Well, Blondie, she was little when I started. Then you must have come by way of Australia. Oh, Blondie. The idea of letting me prepare luncheon for a child. If it wasn't for that bonus, I... Take those bags up to my room. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Are they heavy, dear? Yeah, huh? <laughs> yeah kind of, but... I... Take them upstairs. And that one's Elmer. Aren't they adorable? Mommy says I'm adorable. Oh, you are, Cookie. You're very adorable. Thank you for lightly. <laughs> uh, I do hope they aren't bothering you. Bothering me? They're utterly delightful. And these puppies are the cutest things. Uh, Daisy? <laughs> and you too, Elmer. You haven't had lunch yet, have you? I might have known he'd make it. Uh, Alvin Fuddle, one of the neighbor's boys. We've met. <laughs> yes, I think I'm going to be very happy here, especially since your husband is connected with the theater. Theater? Isn't he? Well, his firm is remodeling an old marketplace into a moving picture house, if that's what you mean. But I thought he was connected with the legitimate theater, the stage. Are you, Miss Wheeler? <sighs> oh, yes. Yes, I was part of a wonderful little theater group back home. Imagine that. Uh, I, uh, I used to act in high school. <laughs> Really? Oh, I guess it's silly for a married woman with responsibilities to think of such things, but I've always wanted to take up the stage. As a hobby, of course. You know, Mrs. Bumstead, I think you have great possibilities as an actress. Really, Miss Wheeler? Well, let's talk about it at lunch, shall we? I'd love to. With another hairdo, the right clothes, and some coaching, you'd be simply amazing. You're joking, Miss Wheeler. No, I mean it, Blondie. We ought to do something about you. Huh? Oh, Dagwood, dear, are you having lunch with us? 
Oh, no, Blondie, I have to go right back down to the office. I'm in charge now. And I'm going to have a big job on my hands. <laughs> Mr. Bumstead, you're going to have a bigger job on your hands than you think. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Ah, to be here again. The very walls of this old restaurant we call the ecstatic moments of our early courtship. Do they not, Ronald? But one cannot help but remember past days when the food of love was our feast. However, let us be gay. <laughs> We will order if you like, Ronald. By all means, turtle soup tonight. Roast goose and a green salad. And naturally a nice with the coffee. Hey, can't we make it apple pie with cheese, huh? <laughs> oh, hello, Dagwood, dear. Huh? Oh, are we really going to have roast goose for dinner? You're having a sandwich. <laughs> Vicky and the children and I ate early. A sandwich? But I... Uh, gee, Blondie, what are you so dressed up for? You know what Vicky says, no prepositions at the end of sentences. Huh? What you really want to know is, for what reason am I dressed up? Yeah? We're giving a play, Mad Moonlight. Oh. Vicky wrote it. She's playing the lead, and <laughs> I'm the second lead. That's the last draw in the woodpile. When that harpy starts making an actress out of my wife, it's time to tell her to leave. She's just made trouble ever since she's been here. She's influencing you, Blondie, and I'm going to tell her. If she came into this room this very minute, I'd say... Hello, Vicky. Just what were you going to say, Dagwood? Well, uh, that, uh... He doesn't like the idea of our giving a play. No, I don't. And what's more, I'm going to put my foot down. Then I suggest you be very careful where you put it. The play is being sponsored by your boss's wife. D Mrs. Dithers? Well, what of it? Mrs. Dithers may be my boss's boss, but she isn't mine. And if she came into this room this very minute, I'd say... Hello, Mrs. Dithers. Hello, Dagwood. Oh, my dear, I'm so excited about the play. I can hardly wait until we get started. Oh, I wonder where Mr. Crumb is. Our postman? Are you trying to tell me that that old fuddy-duddy... Huh? That that old fuddy-duddy... Me? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to come in this way, Mrs. Bumstead, but I just can't afford to get knocked down in my own clothes. Are you in this thing, too, Mr. Crumb? Well, I do have a small part in the play, but I have some other duties, too. Mm. I'm master property, stage manager, sound effects man, I handle mm. a wardrobe and understudy the lead. Mm. And I suppose you sell peanuts in the aisles between the acts. Say, that's an excellent idea, Mr. Bumstead. I believe I will. Huh? Well, Dad, what have you said everything you've wanted to say? Yes, I have. This is my house, and I'm not going to stand around while... while, while of course oh. you're not going to. Take your part and read it. Well, thank you. The part? What part? You're playing Ronald Believe. Goodness knows we wouldn't have you if there wasn't such a shortage of men, but under the circumstances. But, Blondie, I don't want to be in this. Now, you go to the kitchen and make your sandwich, dear, and when you've finished, come right back. I know, I know. I'll dag with darling. I... I'll take care of you. Blondie, I can't be in this play. Remember the bonus deal. We can use that extra money. Yeah, I know, but we'll be waiting for you. He'll be back soon. Vicky, when is that director friend of yours coming? Any minute, Mrs. Dithers. He telephoned me a half hour ago from the station. Well, let's sit down and I'll give you a brief synopsis of the play. It's a drama of a man in love with two women. His wife, a silly, vain, superficial woman, played by Blondie. Oh. <laughs> and the other woman, an intelligent, beautiful actress, played by myself. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Dithers, you're playing Marie, Blondie's French maid. Free French, of course. Of course. Oh. And Mr. Crumb, you're playing the butler. Uh, oui, oui, madame. No, Mr. Crumb, it's an English butler. Oh, uh, oh, very good, me little lady. Oh, isn't he wonderful? Oh, this play is going to be too thrilling. Try that line again. 
again, Alexander. Mother, what's that on the road ahead? Mother, what's that on the road ahead? Are you in the play too? I'm playing the part of little Murgatroyd, a child who has suffered. Living with you has qualified him for the role. And what are you doing in it? Assisting Mr. Crumb and coaching Alexander. Yeah. Come on, stupid, try the line again. Now remember, do like Vicky says, enunciate clearly. I'll get it. Good evening. I am looking for a young lady, and I'm not quite sure whether this is the right address. This is the Bumstead residence. Then this is the right place. Where is Miss Wheeler? In the living room, sir. Thank you. Now, in the first act, Jerry! Vicky! <laughs> Here he is, people, Jerry Grant, our director. Blondie Bumstead, my hostess. You do? Mrs. Dithers. How, How do you do? do? <laughs> Mr. Crumb. How do you do? Alexander Bumstead. Alvin Fattle. Delighted. We were waiting for you to come so we could start rehearsal. Fine. Who's playing what? I'm doing Helen. Blondie's playing Diana, and her husband is playing Ronald. Uh, you can read his lines until he comes. Anything you say, Vicky? Sorry, Daisy, you can't have a taste on Meatless Tuesday. You must. You can't. No! 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 Bondi? No! No! Bondi, what's wrong? What did you say to her? I just said I was going to divorce her. You, you've got some nerve. Nobody can divorce my wife and get away with it. Oh, Daisy, stop! Where'd he go? Oh, Daisy, well, this is the play. Yeah? Oh, Oh. Mr. Grant, please forgive him. The play? This is my husband. My husband. Huh? In the play, dear. This is the part you're doing. Oh, that. Oh, well, I I've been thinking. I, I, I don't think. I'm too nervous to act. Why, there is nothing to it, old fellow. Huh? You walk out on the stage. The audience applauds. You know you are the center of attraction. Yeah. And just like that, you say your lines. It's as easy as falling off a log. Yeah, but I, I, I don't worry about it. No. I am here to direct you. Mm. You come down to my hotel afternoons and I'll give you all the coaching you need. All right. oh, but, Mr. Grant, if you're going to work with Dagwood, why, you can stay right here with us. Oh, oh. Blondie, could he? Oh, that's awfully nice of you, Mrs. Bumstead. I accept your invitation with pleasure. Uh, yeah, but where will he stay? Oh, that's very simple, dear. You move out of our room, and Vicky will move in with me. Alexander will move out of his room and move in with Cookie. Mr. Grant will move in Alexander's room, and then everyone will be taken care of. But where will I sleep, huh? Oh. Well, that's right, Dagwood. Where will you stay? Why, he can move into my room. <laughs> Gee, thank you. Uh, folks, oh, no. we've got a big job ahead of us. Huh? But if we work hard, we can put this thing over. Mr. Bumstead, huh? you have more to do than the others. And a cast is only as good as its weakest member. So you, in particular, must dig in. Well, day and night, night and day, you've got to work. And work. And work. Yes, sir, JC. I'm certainly glad you told me to come up here and look at that site. Perfect location for my plan. Well, there you go for it, Randy. And those houses are yours? Well, Randy. <laughs> Don't apologize, J.C. I'm tickled pink with them. Solves my workers' housing problem. Well, then all we've got to do is get that lease signed on those last 20 acres in the northeast sector. <laughs> That's no problem. The owner told me he'd do business with us. 
In that case, we can go home today. That suits me. I'm anxious to see Vicky. Fine, I'll call Dagwood and tell him we're coming. Okay. Morning, operator. I'd like long distance. Still memorizing your lines, Mr. Bumstead? Yeah, for a week now, and it's getting me. Rehearsing morning, noon, and night. I think I'll have a breakdown. Poor Mr. Bumstead. Why don't you sleep for a while? I won't call you unless it's important. Gee, Francis, I'd appreciate that. Go on, then, and take it easy, sir. Oh. He's getting to look more like us every day. Did us construction company. You want to speak to Mr. Bumstead? Is it important because he's going to sleep right now? Oh, it's Mr. Dithers. Just a moment, sir. Hello. Hello, Dagwood. Say, what's the matter with you down there? If you're going to sleep, don't do it on my time. Do it at home. I can't sleep at home, Mr. Dithers. I can't do anything but rehearse for a play. Play? Hmm? <laughs> well, uh, this is hardly play, Dagwood. Uh, Mr. Wheeler and I have been working like dogs. Can't you hear me, Mr. Dithers? I'll talk louder. <clears throat> I said that I'm in a play. Oh, what? You don't know what I've been through. Nobody knows. And all I got to say is... I want you to to deal with Vicky. Did he say something about Vicky? Oh, of course not, Randy. He says he's handling a deal that's tricky. Oh, well, ask him how Vicky is. By the way, Dagwood, how is Vicky? It, uh, I just told you, Mr. Dithers. Between you and me... She's a pain in the neck! What'd he say? He <laughs> says, uh, Vicky's making friends by the peck. Oh, fine, <laughs> fine. Yeah, and you don't know how I've suffered with her and that little theater boyfriend of hers. Look, Dagwood, I'll come down and take care of matters immediately. Something gone wrong, J.C.? Well, Dagwood's involved in some deal. I'll have to straighten him out. Uh, when do we leave? Oh, we can start, uh... Oh, look, Randy, you better stay here. Why? Uh, well, uh... Get the, the lease signed on those 20 acres. You can get it all cleaned up today. Oh, that's a minor detail. Oh, well, as long as you're here, you might as well tend to it. Uh, you know, verbal agreements. Well, all right. I'll come down the early morning train. Good. By the time you get there, I'll have everything straightened out. I hope. We start with the first act. As the curtain rises, the butler is discovered, dozing on the chair. As the clock strikes one... He opens his eyes. Ding! Mercy me! It's one o'clock and the master isn't home yet. But, Ark, I hear footsteps. Now? Uh, now, now. Cheerio, Montmorency. Good evening, sir. So, you have waited up for me? You are a loyal servant, Montmorency. But you can go to bed now. Uh, but first, bring me a pot of coffee and tell my wife to come here. Very good, sir. Oh. <gasps> Dagwood, you were wonderful. Yeah. Now you can relax, Mr. Bumstead. Yeah. <laughs> now, Blondie, we go now to the second act. That exciting scene that uh, life can be cruel. With lots of feeling. All right, Jerry. Life can be cruel. Ever since this horrible thing has entered my home. That was swell, Blondie, but I want you to take it again. And this time, give it everything you've got. Oh, oh Mr. Dithers, I thought you'd never get here. Well, the train was late. I didn't even stop at the house to uh, stop it. Well, if my deal with Wheeler falls through, I'll need that hand to choke you. Yeah. I haven't done anything to hurt your deal. I've let Vicky stay and... And put on a play. You knew Randy Wheeler didn't want her mixed up with the theater. No, I didn't know that at well, all. Well, you should have. Well, how could I if you didn't tell me? Well, never mind. I'm telling you now. Wheeler thinks that little theater guy is just after Vicky's money. And if he finds out he's here, he'll move her again. Gosh, I wish he would, Mr. Dithers. Don't be a fool, Dagwood. If Wheeler doesn't settle down here, he won't build the tool plant. Is that clear? Yeah. 
So we've got to get rid of Vicky's boyfriend, haven't we? Yeah. All right. The first step towards that is stopping this play. Now, when does it go on? Tomorrow night. Oh, we haven't much time, then. Uh, what are you going to do, Mr. Dithers? Appeal to Blondie. Where can I see her alone? Oh, Mr. Dithers, I wouldn't know. The house is so full of people, I haven't been able to see Blondie alone for weeks. Then I'll talk to all of them. Hmm? Yeah. Ever since this horrible thing has entered my home, I... Oh, hello, Mr. Dithers. Hello, Blondie. Vicky. Hello, Mr. Dithers. I guess you know Mr. Crumb. And this is our director, Jerry Grant. How do you do? Did Dagwood tell you about our play, Mr. Dithers? Yes, he did. And I must say, I was shocked. Here we are at war, everybody giving their all for their country. And what do I find in this house? A group of supposedly intelligent people directing their activities not to the war effort, but to the glorification of themselves. Of course I was shocked. Who wouldn't be? What's yeah. the matter with you? Have you forgotten your patriotism? Have you lost your senses? Have you? Why, why, Cora, what are you doing here? I'm in this play. You? Yes, Julius. I overheard your little speech, and I must say I'm shocked and embarrassed that you insulted our friends. Oh, my dear, I... We're perfectly aware of our duty to our country. Well, we're putting on this play to raise money for the USO. We've already sold $5,000 worth of tickets. Cora, I didn't and know... And speaking of patriotism, where's yours? But I'm always willing to do my part, Cora. Very well, then. Huh? Do it. The butler's part is only a few lines. You ought to be able to master it by tomorrow night. So go into the kitchen with Dagwood and learn it. Oh, but Cora, I... You heard me, Julius Caesar Dithers. Oh, now wait. Mr. Crumb, you don't mind my giving your part to my husband, do you? You have so many things to do. Oh, that's perfectly all right, Mrs. Dithers. I think he'll make a dandy butler. <laughs> As the curtain rises, butler is discovered dozing in a chair. Clock strikes one, the butler opens his eyes. Mercy me, it's one o'clock and the master isn't home yet. But Ark, I hear footsteps. Chilio, Mark Morenci. Good evening, sir. Oh, shut up. Why didn't you tell me my wife was in this thing? Oh, well... Why I... didn't you tell me it was being done for the USO? Well, I... I, I... Oh, never mind. If Wheeler finds this out, my deal is cooked. But good. And so's your bonus. Does he have to find out? No, he doesn't have to, Dagwood, but he's going to. He'll be here tomorrow morning. Well, wait a minute. Can't we stop him from coming down? How? By remote control? <laughs> wait a minute. Now, maybe I can do something. Huh? If I drive up there tonight, I can bring him back in my car. Oh, yeah, but you'd still be here in time for the show, Mr. Dithers. Not the way I'm going to drive. Oh, oh Mr. Dithers, you, you forgot about the part. Oh, that. Yeah, you take that. Put it in one of your sandwiches. Yeah. Fifteen miles to Bellevue. Oh, for heaven's sake, J.C., we've been driving around in a circle. Oh, now, how could that have happened? Oh, you took that right turn 40 miles back instead of the left one like I told you to. I guess I'm tired, Randy. Look, since we're practically back at Bellevue, why don't we return to the hotel and get a good night's sleep and start out fresh oh, in the morning? I want to get to town, J.C., and I'd have been there if you hadn't showed up this morning. Now, come on, let's get a move oh, on. Oh, but Randy... Oh, come I... on, J.C., come on. If we're not a success, I'll, I'll shoot myself. You'd better not. I'd miss proposing to you every day. 
Mr. Grant, will you check my sound effects, please? I'd love to. Pardon me. Looks okay to me. Got all your cues? Cues? Why, I... Oh, cues, yeah. Are we using castanets? That's not castanets. That's my knees. You're not nervous. Yes, I am, now that I have to act. The only thing that makes me less nervous is that I know that Mr. Bumstead is more nervous than I am. Dagwood, you must know where my husband is. Yeah. Well, I, uh, he was at the Bellevue Hotel. Yes, but he checked out. Yeah. Wait till I get my hands on him. You look swell. Oh, thank you, darling. <laughs> oh, and thank you for the beautiful flowers. Oh, but Dagwood, wait until you see me in my evening gown and breath. Gosh, you'll look like a movie star, huh? That's what Jerry said. He did? Oh, he did? Dagwood, I haven't told you this before, but Jerry thinks I'm terribly talented. He says I have a fresh quality the American theater could use. He has a fresh quality himself. To... What else did he say? Well, that he was going to talk to a New York producer about me. You mean you might leave and go on the stage? Of course not, dear. Oh. But it would be fun. Just think of all the money I could earn. Why, you wouldn't have to work. Gee, I never thought of that. What do you mean I wouldn't have to work? I'm not going to have my wife supporting me. Oh, no. Now, Dagwood, I, I, dear, well, don't I, get excited, I, darling. I, well, I haven't said I was leaving mm. yet. Mm. Look, Mommy, I'm all ready. Uh, <gasps> Alexander, whoever made you up? I did. Colorful, isn't he? Like a rainbow. You come with me, dear. I'll have Vicky tone you down. You must have made up in the dark, Mr. Bumstead. What's wrong, Mr. Bumstead? Oh, I'm worried about Blondie. Jerry's encouraging her to go on the stage. And I, what am I telling you for? Go on, Alvin, beat it. OK. But you'd better get ready. It's almost time for the curtain to go up. <laughs> yeah, look out. Not only do you run out of gas, but when you get to a station, you haven't your ration book. I could have lost it. Well, never mind. Here comes the car. See me, it's one o'clock and the master isn't home yet. Why, Marie, what are you doing uh, up at this hour? Madame Whitmore, she is so unhappy because her husband is out with another woman. She cannot sleep. So, Marie, she cannot sleep too. <laughs> Poor Mrs. Whitmore. I feel sorry for her little Murgatroy. Uh, Murgatroy. <laughs> but, ah. 
I hear footsteps. Footsteps, Alvin. Coming up and down, sir. Huh? Oh, sir. Your head. <laughs> Morency? Good evening, sir. So, you have waited up until I came home. You are a loyal servant, Montmorency. But you can go to bed now. But first, get me a pot of coffee and tell my... my... Oh, my. <laughs> my wife, do come here. Uh, but first, get me a wife of coffee and tell my pot to come here? <laughs> it is going to be difficult to tell Diana that I have fallen in love with somebody else. But my mind is made up. And now, I will drink a toast. A toast. <laughs> Mr. Crown, you put tea water in the bottle, didn't you? Sir. Seawater? I thought you said seawater. Oh, oh. To a new life and a new love. To my Helen. me, Ronald. Did I? Diana, our marriage is a travesty. Oh, <laughs> Diana, our marriage is a travesty. I mean, vastery. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't feel good. Dagwood, oh. you've got to go on. <laughs> well, Ronald, huh? I'm waiting. What's on your mind? It's on my stomach. <sighs> oh. I believe I know what's wrong with you, Ronald. Uh, you, you feel a fondness for someone else. No, I just feel seasick. <laughs> I, I'll leave you alone, Ronald, huh? with your thoughts. Vicky, we'll skip the rest of the scene up to your entrance. All right, Jerry. Mr. Crumb, hmm. get on and announce, Vicky. Alvin, ring the bell. Miss Ellen Carter. Say my name. So say it, my love. Say it. Daisy! <laughs> Ronald, tonight you must make up your mind whether you want me or your wife. Huh? It isn't fair to me or to her to go on like this. Ready for your light cue, Mr. Crumb? What? Your light cue, Mr. Oh, Crumb? Yes. I love you so much, Ronald. I can't bear to let you out of my sight. I won't ever leave you, Diana. Never, never, never. Mr. Bumstead. Yeah. Hurry, Dagwood. They're nearly up to our entrance. Uh, 
Bonnie, I'll try to make up for this. You're already made up, Mr. Bumstead, like a haunted house. <laughs> Blondie, may I see you? Alone? Of course, Jerry. Huh? Vicky's very upset, Blondie. She wants me to go on and finish the play and tell the audience Dagwood is sick or something. But you can't, Jerry. Dagwood would feel terrible. Well, if he doesn't do better in the next scene, I am taking his place. Hey. Your flower's gone. Oh, yeah, I guess I lost it. That's okay, Mr. Bumstead. I'll take care of it. Mm. Oh, Bonnie, what, what were you and Jerry talking about? He wanted me to tell you something, but I don't think I'd better now. It might upset you. You can tell me, Bonnie. I, I can take it. Here it is, Mr. Bumstead. Hi. Now, dear, try not to fall or do anything violent in this next scene. Hmm. Uh, after all, your clothes are in it, too, and, well, we wouldn't want anything to happen to them. Yeah. No, stop that. Uh, how do you do? How do you do, uh, sir? My daughter's staying here with the Bumpsteads. Is she in? No, sir. Oh, well, are the Bumpsteads here? No. That was your daughter over at the show. Show? Uh, the motion pictures, Randy. They might be there for hours if it's a double feature. Uh, come on over to my place and have a drink. Yeah, well, I could sure use one, J.C. J.C.? Say, are you Mr. Dithers? Yes. <gasps> Is your wife going to give it to you? She's been trying to get you all day. I know. Uh... She said Mr. Crum will have to be the butler. Butler? Yes, you know, in Mad Moonlight. Why, that's the play my daughter wrote. Yes, they're yeah. all in it over at the auditorium. So she's in a play. You knew that, didn't you? That's why you saw me lost the road in the ration book. Oh, Randy, I... Is, uh... is there a Jerry Grant acting in it? No, sir. Well, uh, that's a relief. He's directing it. That does it. You knew about Grant and about the play. Now I'll tell you something you don't know. Oh. How are deals off right now? I'll bust up that play. Randy, wait a minute. Ronald, let's not go out this evening. Let's stay home. You and I and little Murgatroyd. Oh, Ronald, can you so easily forget how once we loved each other? How on evenings like this we would open the window. <sighs> Hurry with the nightingale, Mr. Crumb. Oh. And listen to the nightingale. Here we are, Vicky. The nightingale has gone to war. Oh, it is too late. For the sentiment we have not known for years, Diana, I will now call Helen and tell her my decision. Oh. Operator, please get me... Uh, <laughs> Michini, master magician. How did that car get into his pocket? This is the clothes I rented. They used to belong to a magician. Yeah. <laughs> Ronald! You mean I can no longer hold you? No. But, Diana, you won't be left empty-handed. Oh! oh. Huh? <laughs> Go on, Dave. Oh. All right, Randy. Diana, I will be staying at this address. Huh? <laughs> Where did that come from? I don't know, but someone was sure to give him the bird. Shh. Blondie, I'm getting jittery. Oh, oh. take would go on. Huh? Go mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> 
I... Let them laugh, Dagmar. Don't pay any attention to them. Go on. All right. And so, Diana, I leave you. Oh. But there is no cause for you to grieve. There will be other chances, other men. Oh. For on your cheek, youth still blooms like a flower. Huh? Like a whole bunch of flowers. <laughs> Diana, this is goodbye. No, 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 Ronald. Huh? You cannot leave me. I'll never no, let no. you go. <laughs> Blondie crying, Vicky. If she is, it's your fault. Let's go on. Oh. Ronald, my dearest, I've oh. come in answer to your call. Oh, what's, what's Jerry doing with her? You don't have to tell me your decision. Huh? You're wearing our flower, oh. the symbol of our love. Huh? Let me but smell it once. Why, yes, she just left with Jerry Grant out that door. She did? Mm -hmm. Oh, I gotta stop them before it's too late. Too late? Miss Wheeler! Miss Wheeler! Miss Wheeler! Miss Wheeler! Oh, Miss... Mr. Crumb, have you seen Dagwood? Yes, Miss Bumstead, he went after you. Why, you're here! Good heavens! Well, Mr. Crumb, what's the matter? Well, Mr. Bumstead thought you and Mr. Grant were going away somewhere. Together. Miss Wheeler went over. Oh, my goodness! Oh! Oh, oh Miss Bumstead! No. Oh, confused. Driver, can't you go any faster, please? Is this trip for pleasure or for business? Business? My wife's running away with another man. Oh, monkey business. Yeah. I still gotta go 35 miles an hour. No. Please, go faster, driver. Is this trip for business or pleasure? I'm trying to catch my husband. That's a pleasure, lady. We'll go 35. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we can't go on with the show just now because, uh, well, uh, some of the members of the cast have disappeared and we don't know where they've disappeared to. Vicky. 
Randy, Randy, you gotta listen. Now look here, JC. Will you go away and stop bothering me? Vicky. Randy, I tried to stop this play from going on. Vicky! You asked Dagwood if I didn't try to now stop. Now here, JC. I told you we were through when I met it. Vicky! Be reasonable, Randy. After all, you do want the jewels. Julius! Just a minute, Cora. <laughs> Hurry, darling. Don't pack too many things. Just what you need. I'll call the airport and try to get reservations. Eh? All right, Jerry. Operator, get me the airport. Where is she? Listen, now, where is she? She went upstairs to pack. Huh? Pack? Oh. Now, look here, old fellow. You're not going to make a fuss about this, are you? Fuss? Did you think I was just going to let you get away with it? Naturally. What business is it of yours? Uh -huh. And I should let her run away with you? Why not? Ah, see here, fella. You drop this paternal attitude and I'll pay you handsomely. Pay me? Sure. I'm gonna get plenty of dough out of this marriage. Ooh, sounds like a good proposition, Dagwood. Of course it is. Oh, oh. Huh? Vicky, I, I, I thought that Blondie... Dagwood bumped it. Dagwood, whatever in the world! Oh, gosh, Blondie, I, I thought you'd run off with Jerry. With Jerry? Hey, you said... No, he said, I mean, Mr. Crumb said, well, I, I didn't know that Jerry was going to marry Vicky. What? My daughter marry that pipsqueak? I'm about fed up with you, you ham. If you think you're going to marry my daughter, you're very much mistaken. Now, wait a minute, Now, don't Father. you fight for him, Vicky. He isn't worth it. He's a phony, and the sooner you realize that, the better. Now, scram, you ham. I had to throw him out, Vicky. Well, you saved uh, me the trouble. Thanks to the Bumsteads, I just found out what a heel he was. Yes, and thanks to them, I never want to set foot on the stage again. After what happened tonight, I'm through acting. Vicky, you really mean that? Yes, she does, Mr. Wheeler, because I feel the same way. I've made a fool of myself talking about glamour and a career, neglecting my family and my home. And if Dagwood will ever forgive me... Oh, of course I will, Blondie. Gosh, nothing matters as long as I have you. And as for Mr. Dithers and his bonus... What bonus? The one I was going to get if you built the tool plant. Well, I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. You'll get that bonus, all right. Gee, Mr. Wheeler, I'm awfully glad everything has turned out the way it has. So am I. There's just one more thing I want to say. Starting right now, the Bumstead family is through with acting. Mommy! Romeo, oh, Romeo. Yeah? What if I act out, Romeo? <laughs>